You don't know what's in that stuff. It could cause serious damage. Hello, welcome to Sound and Fury Book Reviews. As usual, I am Tina. This video deals with mature themes. Normally I do not review this genre on my channel, but I made a promise that if I hit 200 subs, thank you everybody, I would review this book. Also, I know you sexual deviants have been waiting for this, so yes, I am reviewing Enthralled by Tiffany Roberts. This is a romance sci-fi featuring a woman who falls in love with a... Uh... Well, I mean, look, he's a freaking spider, okay? The first book was Ensnared, where they first meet, and this one continues their sordid tale of unorthodox love and lots of sex. So... <laughs> Why did I read this in the first place? Well, the first one kept showing up on my Amazon Kindle as a suggestion in the summer last year. So I read it kind of for like the lulls and because the, come on, the covers are awesome. The covers are really fun. <laughs> is it funny? Uh, indubitably, my friends, it is. Is it sexy? Honestly, like a little bit. I hate spiders though. Like I hate spiders with a passion. So uh, no, I still am terrified of spiders despite reading this book. The romantic tension in the books are very, very well done. I don't read a ton of romance. Actually, I barely read it at all. Usually I read it by accident, not knowing it was a romance <laughs> or because it was a part of a book club like I did with Winter's Orbit like last month. Yet I did used to, to write romance as a ghostwriter. So it's not like I hate it or I'm here to belittle it. There's value in reading a romance book just as there's value in doing anything you enjoy or gives you an escape. If you only read romance, okay, maybe broaden your horizons. But I'd say that to anyone who only reads, say, Westerns or only reads literary fiction. You know, you got you to gotta get out there and experience the entirety of what the world has to offer. And that is exactly what Ivy does in this book. <laughs> Likewise, I also read this book because I have no qualms and in fact enjoy alien human romance. There are alien human romances in my space opera trilogy. Are they detailed in terms of sex and sex organs and stuff like in this book? <laughs> no. <laughs> I tend to write fade to black sex scenes anyway, as I'm not fond of reading, you know, deep details. <laughs> ha, deep. Now, did I enjoy the first book, uh, Ensnared? Yes, definitely certain aspects I really liked. I'm very much a hardcore sci-fi world-building fictionado, so I wanted less build-up to spider love and way more information about how the spider, they're called rooks, uh, how their society functioned. I also found the communication ability between the two lovers came about way too fast, but it only has one sex scene and there were pretty good stakes in terms of the story. Also, the writing is quick and snappy with a great pace. It's easy to understand and picture. So yes, the first book, definitely worth reading if you like romance. Uh, this one I liked even better for a number of reasons and so spoilers for book one by the way if you plan on reading uh, Ensnared. So what is Enthralled about? He conquered her but he is the one enthralled. <laughs> Sorry. Catan hadn't wanted a mate. Fate gave him Ivy Foster. Now he wants nothing more than to enjoy his little human. Mm -hmm. But Fate is not content to make things so simple. With an enraged queen searching for him, Catan knows the tangle is not safe for his mate. <laughs> Sorry, mate makes me laugh. They need to laugh. They need to laugh. They need to leave. Yet Ivy will not forsake her people and he cannot condemn her compassion. When they wake the other humans from their death sleeps, they were in stasis, Catan has more mouths to feed and the strands of his web are in danger of snapping. Oh my god, I can't stand the puns. They're so good. To keep Ivy and her people safe, he must placate the queen that haunts him or hunts him. He must venture into Zervashi's domain and face her wrath and her desire. The strength of his heart's thread, his bond with Ivy will be tested. So, Let's get the good stuff going first. Just like the first book, the book has a quick snappy prose and moves at a great pace. In fact, the pacing is far better here because we don't have the build up to the love story that dominates the first book. <laughs> Much like Catan dominates Ivy, am I right? <laughs> mm -hmm. We also have two tropes that I love in this book. First contact, in this case, the new humans and the new Vricks meeting each other, and then unorthodox relationships revealed. For the first, we get a different approach to the first contact scenario from the first book as we have Ivy and Catan to guide their species through it. As such, we get the language issue out of the way and get to the fun learning about you stuff. Though, to be honest, it needed a lot more of that. If you want a book without sex that has human and and an insectoid alien learning about one another, Phylogenesis. Yeah. Phylogenesis by my hero, <laughs> Alan Dean Foster, is, uh, is like the king of this in my eyes. There is a little bit of this kind of learning about one another in Enthralled, and I liked that about it, though I, as I said, I needed a lot more. 
I also love when a bizarre coupling gets outed. I don't revel in their discomfort. I hate those movies, you know, where people are get embarrassed. But I just think it's am amusing to see people's reactions. I don't know why. <laughs> anyway, this definitely has that multiple times a lot of, oh, you're fucking that bug kind of conversations. <laughs> There are some action scenes in this book, but to be honest, they didn't really hit me very hard. I found myself zoning out a bit in them. One goes on too long and the others were spider versus spider and kind of hard to picture. The ending was a bit predictable, albeit it was climactic and not in a sexy way. There's also a very obvious trajectory with a character named Cole that felt a bit contrived. I did enjoy how it resolved as that went against the usual grain of those situations, but I don't think it was needed other than as impetus to spur yet another sex scene between Ivy and Catan. I guess you could say that it was kind of intended as like a trust thing, but I don't think it needed to even go the way that it did. Anyway, um, speaking of sex scenes, in book one there is one sex scene at the end of the book. In this book there are multiple sex scenes. They definitely aren't repetitive as they feature different things, but I just didn't need them. Yes, this is a romance, so I'm obviously not the target market for this, but for me, I'm more about like the slow build to a love story. I like slow burn <laughs> than a bunch of sex scenes between the same people all the time. That's just a preference thing though. If people are reading this for the spider alien human romance, then they will get a lot out of this and probably be likely satisfied by it. I just was kind of like, oh my god, another sex scene? Come on. There was also a part where Catan grabs Ivy's butt. <laughs> And I laughed so hard. My husband was like, what are you reading over there? I'm like, nothing, nothing. You don't need to know what I'm reading. This might be too much for those of you who have no interest in sex details, but I did warn you that this, this video contains mature themes. But here's a PSA for all of you women and people with uteruses, vaginas out there. Pee after sex. And especially pee after unprotected sex with a weird alien. You don't know what's in that stuff. It could cause serious damage to your pH. It's not intended for you. You aren't the same species. <laughs> Get it out of there. The fact that the lack of this peeing or other kind of cleansing... I'm not saying you should do douching because that's bad for you, but just, you know, maybe clean up a little bit. Happens more than once and made me very concerned about Ivy getting a UTI or something else. Yes, it's a romance, but still, I was just kind of like, girl, go in the water for a second, man. Like, come on. I also still wanted more world building in this one. I'm not sure where the rest of the Rook society is as we only see these tunnels and like five other spider people. I'm still wondering if there are smelters that they use to make these gold and gems and things that they have. I'm still wondering about this war with the other Rook's tribe. Is that going to come back? Is that going to be in book three? Because that sounds kind of cool. Uh, are there baby spiderlings anywhere? I want to see little baby spiderlings. That would be really cute, even though I hate spiders. <laughs> I really did like the inclusion of queer characters, both human and Vrix, as well as the banter between Catan's friends. Basically, I could have used a lot more of the latter as it was funny and I liked that. <laughs> Catan is a bit of a stick in the mud, you know, in terms of a character though. There's a great line about him. He was moving with a blend of speed, alertness, and caution that suggested thinly veiled paranoia. That's pretty much all you need to know about Catan. <laughs> or Catan. I keep calling Catan like it's the, the game, the board game. We built this city on bricks and ore. Okay, I don't know if I'm going to cut that. I might just leave it in. Overall, a decent read that I'd still give props to the authors for writing because A, just writing it at all is amazing. And B, as a husband and wife team, Tiffany Roberts is a pseudonym for a husband and wife. I was telling my friend on the weekend about the book because, of course, I'm going to tell everyone about this spider book. And we were joking about how, you know, how in the world they came up with this concept. Like they were just sitting there at dinner one day and be like, hey, we should write a book about an alien fighting fucking a spider. <laughs> I'm just curious. One thing I'm not impressed with is now Am Amazon is filling my Kindle based on your reading with titles like I Married a Birdman or The Scorpion's Mate or Deceived by the Gargoyles. I mean, it's funny, but I don't want that stuff. Send me legit sci-fi. And I'm not saying this, these aren't legit. I'm just saying I want space opera. I don't want <laughs> romance sci-fi all the time. Anyway, overall, for a romance book, it was good. It had all the stuff going for it. I think if you really read romance, you'll probably really like it because it has all the stuff that you want. For me, not enough sci-fi world building, too much sex scenes. Uh, and will I read the third one? Oh, probably at some point. Maybe next year in the summer like this one. I'll do a yearly tradition of reading a bonkers sci-fi romance. <laughs> Unless you guys want me to uh, read it earlier. Then maybe I'll read it at Christmas or something. Yeah, get you in the Christmas spirit.